to spark up a bowl and tuck yourselves in once upon a time is about to begin. The Pack of Ragamuffins. It's set in 1857 in its unforced land in the fairy tale world. We're going to talk about the the uh, children that are <laughs> ras- ragamuffins. These kids. They're not kids. They're animals and inanimate objects. So brace yourself for some weird uh, It starts out in the forest. There is... Uh, a cock and a hen and they are fiending for some nuts yeah so the the cock wants to go get its nuts <laughs> he forgot it another day when they were at the top of the hill so he wants to go up there and get his nuts let's go up the hill and get our fill of these nuts I want to I want to get my mouth all over all of these nuts up this on the hill. The hill. This is the cock, not the hen. The hen's like, dude, yeah, for sure. Because they want to get get to it before the squirrels. I assume the squirrels would always take rain over that hill of nuts and leave none for the cock or the hen. So that's what they do. They, they march on up that hill. There's quite a distance. <laughs> and they got up to this hill and they were like... We got ourselves some nuts. And I don't know if it was that they ate like 10 and they were get way too fat or if they were just like, I don't want to walk. Uh, but they decided not to walk back home. Instead of wanting to walk home, they decided to, to build a carriage instead. They That's so much more work. <laughs> There's a lot of work involved in building a carriage. And he made it out of a bunch of nutshells. Basically, what happens is they make this this uh, carriage out of nuts, and the hen's like, yeah, and sits on top of it, and it's like, all right, now you get to pull. <laughs> and he's like, F- that dude, um, I would much rather be a coachman. I would rather lead this thing and sit back here and and guide the direction of this carriage, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to pull it. I'm better than that. I'm a cock. He's a cocky and he will not tug a a carriage along. They get this duck appears out of nowhere. He's not supposed to be in the forest. Let me tell you that. It's like he was mad at him. Like you're taking my nuts. And got mad and attacked him. Who said you could come up on my nut hill and start eating all my nuts? You're going to pay for this shit. And, and you know how you're going to pay? I'm going to come over there. I'm going to gobble that cock up. <laughs> and that's what he does. He starts running at him with his mouth open. His duck, duck bill wide open. Yep, but the cock was fast too. The cock was ready to rumble. He went on the pounce as well. And um, they battled. It was for the nuts. Uh, and the the duck ended up getting spurs. Dude, it kick, kicks the duck in the f- throat. And <laughs> duck, duck's like, uh, please don't kill me. And cock's like, all right, but you got to pull the carriage. So then they went down the hill. Where they were when we started this story was actually at the bottom of this hill, but their home is was further back. Yeah. The duck hated it. Yeah, Doug was pissed off. The rooster got into coachman position, and the hen was in the carriage. So it was like um, a driving Miss Daisy thing going on there. Now they're they're just ducking along. Uh, the ducks carrying them down the hill. Don't know where they're going. I guess back home. They're on their journey, and and then they come upon a- two foot passengers, the this pin and a needle, and they the pin and the needle is like stop, stop, please. In the name of love, because it's gonna get dark, and it's dirty out here, and we drank too much at the bar, and we really appreciate it if. You could, you know, pick us up for a little bit. And the cock's like, you know what? They're just a pin in a needle. There's room, right? 
Yeah. There's room. Yeah, you can totally get in the carriage. Just don't um, step on our feet because that those are needles <laughs> that are your feet, and that would hurt. And I don't appreciate that if, yeah, if you did that. You could do it to the duck because the duck. So they're on their journey, right? Yep. Um, and they get to an inn on their way home. And they're like, I want, we're going to stay at this inn because it's getting dark and we don't want to go in the dark anymore. Uh, and the duck is wobbling like back and forth and he's, he's not doing a very good job anymore. So uh, we're going to stay at this inn and uh, then we'll shove off in the morning. That's the plan. They got to the inn with the innkeeper. The innkeeper's first instinct was, no, these are probably not very good people. Uh, but then they begged and they and they bargained. Here's what we'll do. We got an egg. Because, by the way, the hen laid an egg uh, on her way here. Uh, also, you can have the duck because he... Uh, Lays an egg every day. And he's useless to us. And he's wobbling. So, at that, the innkeeper's like, all right. I guess. Gives them the room and gives them food and drink and they party and they're just like having a good old evening. They go to bed. Boom, boom, boom. Next morning. Cock and the hen wake up and they're like brainwaves each other. <laughs> From outside. Like they don't have to talk. They know what they're thinking. So the cock brings over the egg and they eat it. They eat the egg. The egg they promised this innkeeper. They eat it. And then... They throw the shells on the ground, right in front of the fireplace. They just throw it on the ground to show the host. Yeah, we know we promised you the egg. And then they go and they go get the pin. It's sleeping still. And then they grab it and they stuff its head in the... The innkeeper's there. chair cushion. And gets stuck in there. Puts it so its feet are in the air, as it were. All right. And then he gets the the needle. He's onto the needle. Yep. And he goes and grabs the needle and he throws it in the, in the innkeeper's towel. He threads it in so it's stuck in there. So he's going around this inn f-ing with all this dude's stuff. Uh, so he's kind of a d- right? What's up with that? Why is this dude being such a d- Oh, it's because he's a cock. And then they fly away. That's all they had to do <laughs> they just they're like all right well our deed is done here and they it's because they were too away. fat because before they couldn't fly away and now that they've digested the food and slept and ate some more and we're able to go but they only ate one egg instead of a bunch of nuts and it was basically just recycling what she put out yeah. and then the duck first of all he likes the open air so he's uh, he's out there in the yard and as they're scurrying away, I guess they're making a commotion. Maybe they pooped on them as they flew away. They must have woken up the duck because the duck was like, I'm free. Innkeeper's not awake. So this is where I go. And he found a stream. And gets in the water and swims away. Because it's m- much quicker. And then it was real quiet. Nothing really happened for a long time. <laughs> Two hours. It's just like, kirk, kirk. I don't know how cricket sounds, but <laughs> something like that. And it sounds like later. crick, crick. <laughs> and two hours later, the host wakes up. <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, I'm I'm up now. So, doodly dee. He's got to clean himself, so he takes a bath or a shower or a bucket bath. Probably a bucket bath back then. Because this was 1857. Yep. And he cleans up, but now he's wet, so he's got to dry himself off. So... Grabs his towel and wipes it all over his face. Imagine you're just washing your face and you take the towel and you just do it. Now imagine there's a needle in that towel. Well, let me tell you. It tore him from ear to ear. It was red everywhere. Like, That's what would happen. It just, it just jokered him. Now, okay, so he just got needled. He got gouged in the now, face by a needle. Now you know what? What happened after that? It's like... Well, that sucks. You get high. Get the take the pain. Take the edge off. Yeah, that's what it is. Pain. He's like, oh, I need some medicine. Let's have some some of that weed. They didn't call it weed back then. They're like, let's have this beautiful flower. 
and smoke it. And then, as he's going to the kitchen to get his pipe, that's where you keep it back then. You can keep it there now if you want. You can keep it wherever the f*** you want. So he goes to get his pipe in the kitchen, but then he stops and he sees the broken eggshells on the ground. Then he gets mad. Not when his face got torn up, but when he saw eggshells on the ground, then he got mad. <laughs> and, he's, and he said, everything is attacking his head, fucking with him. Sorry. So then he has to sit down on his thinking chair. And <laughs> think, think, <laughs> think. So he sits down on his chair. And, but number when there's a pin it's still there and he sits on the pin and that's worse than his face <laughs> it's the worst pain than his face when you get a pin in your butthole <laughs> that's it man that's that's way worse than any any jokerism you can do to my face oh yep so then at that point he suspected his guests <laughs> he's like i will never let ragamuffins into my house again. They consume too much. You pay for nothing. And play mischievous tricks to show their gratitude. <laughs> I let them come in here and sleep in here and eat all my food and didn't charge a dime. And what did they do? They left eggshells on my floor and pinned my face and needled in my butt and the other way around. Damn it. The end.